Alright, what is poppin' people? We're back. And you know what? Today, I, I was feeling a little, a little interesting, right? So, a lot of the time, when I do these little spotlight videos, they're over mons that are either, like, offensive in nature, or at least have some, like... Some amount of, like, offensive potential, right? I think the only time that I haven't just showcased pretty much a straight wall breaker or, like, setup. Oh, no. Let me, let me rephrase that. A lot of time it's, like, heavily offensive Pokemon, but a couple of times it's been some of those, like, setup, more utility slash defensive Pokemon. So think about, like, Talonflame or Cresselia, for instance. But I feel like... An interesting Pokemon to cover, especially in the context of Inu, is Vaporeon. And there are a few reasons for that. I think for starters, it's how Vaporeon is perceived by the community at large. Vaporeon is without a doubt one of the best utility options that Inu has this gen. It's generally really bulky, cleric support's really appreciated because of how like present status moves are and as a result, you really like Vaporeon for having Heal Bell. It's a Wish Passer, which helps keep some things like Copper Raja, Bronzong, and Mudsdale at a good amount of HP. And overall, it's because of its bulk, it's a really good like answer to several Pokemon. You know, if you're looking down this list, right? You got things like, say, Dragalge, which you don't want to get poisoned by, but you still like answer it. You've got things like Salazzle, you got things like Starmie. It overall is really good at answering much of the metagame just through sheer bulk, and whenever you're looking at a kind of passive Pokemon like Vaporeon, you always try to look at like, okay, how can you exploit that passivity? Well, fortunately, Vapo yeah. fortunately for Vaporeon, it's got Stab on Scald, and Scald is a very funny move with the very funny burn chance, and so it's really, you know, you never really want to have to try to contend with Vaporeon's ability to burn you. Because even certain special attackers, right? Like, so think about, you know, Starmie or Gudra even. And these are powerful special breakers that have moves that definitely make it hard for Vaporeon to contend with them. Starmie's got Thunderbolt, Gudra also has Thunderbolt. <laughs> but because of how bulky Starmie, not Starmie, because of how bulky Vaporeon is, if you switch into Scald and you get burned, there is 1000% the chance that Vaporeon is going to stall you out of your health. Obviously Starmie potentially can run Life Orb with Recover instead, but you're still getting heavily pressured just through like the amount of chip damage you're going to be accumulating, potentially leave yourself open to getting taken advantage of by like a teammate of Vaporeon's as they switch out on a predicted recover. So I think another big thing that I want to cover though here is the Blastoise matchup, because one of the reasons people cite Vaporeon as an incredible Blastoise answer, or as a good Blastoise answer, the best one, is because of this set right here. Not really the set, so much the EV spread. And I'm gonna just do like the most basic one you can get, just for simplicity's sake. 40 special defense EVs, Calm Nature, Lefties, all this good stuff, that allows you to avoid Blastoise's 2-hit KO from a plus 4 Dark Pulse. And that's a big reason that people do like Vaporeon in addition to everything I mentioned prior, right? Blastoise is quite possibly the most polarizing Pokemon in the metagame, especially from like a setup perspective. It's so bulky that finding a chance to set up a Shell Smash isn't very hard, and its coverage is really good, meaning that while there are Pokemon that can still take a hit from it, they're quite heavily pressured upon doing so. So you got things like your specially defensive Delmizes, your Gudras, your, even like Sylveon, which, you know, we're talking just a stab surf there, but you get what I'm talking about. These mods are so heavily, like, <laughs> pressured to stay at a high amount of health if they really want to have, if they want to be able to reliably contend with Blastoise. And so Vaporeon is a Pokemon that can actually, you know, even contend with a Blastoise with two Shell Smashes up is quite cool. But where does Vaporeon fall short? Where, well, passivity, as we mentioned. There are quite a few Pokemon, and I'll go over them later, that just kind of take advantage of this Pokemon. Because what if you aren't able to threaten a Scald Bird and then do something with it? There's not a lot Vaporeon wants to. There's not a lot Vaporeon, I guess, can do, right, in return. So think about something like, I don't know, Choice Mix Decidueye. 
What is Vaporeon doing to that? Nothing. And so you constantly concede momentum to a lot of powerful Pokemon that it's here. Which is just kind of unfortunate. And also, let's think this through rationally, right? How good is this Vaporeon set really at dealing with Blastoise? Yes, the bulk is great. But please tell me what we do when Blastoise just decides to shell smash as many times in your faces at once. <laughs> you know, you can avoid 2 at KO from plus 4, but what about from plus 6? Ha ha! So you're like one flinch away a lot of the time from failing that matchup. And it's why I don't consider Vaporeon as good as I think a lot of other people. I think the passivity really does hurt it. And while it's incredible as a utility option, there's just... It feels too exploitable. However, let's talk about some other moveset techs, because I do think they're worth mentioning, especially in the context of Vaporeon and passivity. So, Heal Bell, again, it's the most valued last move on Vapo. Just because of the omnipresence of status from the likes of Talonflame, Bronzong, Mudsdale, and more. But, you know, Vaporeon's got a lot that it can do. I think Roar is really nice on this, especially in the context of the Blastoise matchup. If you're relying on Vaporeon to be your primary answer of two Blastoise, I think you really want to try to fit Roar. Obviously, you don't stop Blastmon Blastoise from shell smashing three times, but I think if you don't run Roar, you're just asking yourself to lose to sub Blastoise, and you're still asking yourself to get really heavily pressured by just standard shell smash three attacks. Roar helps mitigate this. Yeah, there's still the flinching that can come into play, and that's annoying. But at the very least, you're not just a sitting duck for Blastoise to set up further. And if we want to talk about fixing up passivity issues, anyone that played or plays still SMNU knows about this Vaporeon set, the one capable of somehow <laughs> clutching out <laughs> random games as the last Pokemon. I cannot tell you guys how many times I've been able to win a game in Gen 7 and you just because I had a Vaporeon as my last Pokemon and my opponent had no way to break through it. And so I just wasted the next 50 turns of the game <laughs> winning the War of Attrition with Scald, Wish, Tect, and Toxic. It's a very funny set. One that I think probably deserves a little bit more usage, but that's beside the point. And then, I think even Flip Turn, especially if you want to put it in the context of with Heavy Duty Boots, is also fine. Vaporeon synergizes well with, you know, pretty much every breaker in the tier. Just because of flip turn and wish frankly so you could pass these wishes pretty safely to pokemon like maybe a surfetched maybe even a machamp keep them healthy and let them keep trying to wall break the entire game especially mons that like surfetched where you think about some common ways of dealing with them are just through like passive damage so it can be nice to have that safe way of getting them in but obviously i did say that i would talk about Counterplay. Also, I didn't have the last mod I wanted to. Or, wait, no, the last two. Okay, well, that totem or act, whatever. Let's talk about general counterplay to Vaporeon, because I do think people at times maybe overstate how easy it is for Vaporeon to just exist and not feel punished. Also, just full, eh, I was gonna say full disclosure, I'm gonna, like, mention certain Pokemon, but not actually put them here, but I actually want to put Ice Horse here now. So I think the most obvious thing to start talking about are Pokemon that can hit Vaporeon super effectively. And you've got like five of those here. Heliolisk, Vileplume, Rotom, Mode, Decidueye, and we're talking specifically Specs Decidueye, just to make sure that's clear, and Celebi. All of these Pokemon can generally safely switch into Vaporeon and not really fear anything. Scaldbird's kind of annoying to cut for cutting into the longevity of like these three. But otherwise, you're not worried about it, like, hampering your ability to do damage. And generally, you could still switch in with these five Pokemon here, no matter what Vaporeon does, it did just threaten to drop it on its face. Now, I guess I should still clarify, the most common Celebi set doesn't run a grass move. You're thinking, if you're talking about, like, standard Celebi, most people are gonna reference this set right here. Which... Theoretically, Vaporeon could maybe stall out if it got some real ideal circumstances. But for all intents and purposes, Celebi is still really good at beating up on Vaporeon. And if you want to get real technical, well, this set does exist. 
and well, <laughs> you know, I'd love to see Vaporeon beat this. But he got Specs Decidueye, that needs no introduction. Rotom Mo, again, potentially getting overwhelmed by Scald Burn plus the just like status throughout the long game, especially if it's not like Nasty Plot or Pain Split. Because Vaporeon Special Bolt can actually let it kind of contend with Rotom Mo. You don't get Oko'd by Leaf Storm, and he can potentially just heal off that damage with Wish. So, you know, if you're not Plot Rotom, you're probably not overwhelming Vaporeon. And if you're not Pain Split, then I do think there is something to worry about in the long term. And of course, Vile Plume, you actually just use Vaporeon to set up fodder with growth. And then, as we said with Heliolisk, unless Vaporeon runs Toxic, it is a free switch. And if you want to talk about other free switches, Toxic Croak's another really good one, especially because of how it is not worried about Vaporeon somehow tanking its hits. At least if you're, like, physical, which they pretty much always are. Dry Skin lets Toxic Croak do everything that Helios can do. You could use Vaporeon to set up fodder with Swords Dance, or I, you know, I suppose Nasty Plot. There's nothing you could do in return. And if we want to talk about other setup sweepers that are kind of similar in that regard, or just Pokemon that can use a setup move of some kind, then you gotta consider Crit Jura here. Nice Scopeland Sniper. Agility, Focus, Energy, Kingdra just does not care too much about Vaporeon. Even Substitute plus focus energy you know give up a little bit of sweeping potential but i would say you're even safer against vaporeon because you don't worry about it beating you down with um skulls maybe getting a lucky burn early that could be really nice and maybe a raquited a little bit like you know mon isn't used that much right but if you want to talk about like mons that's how he spell heavy but if you want to talk about mons that just exploit Vaporeon, I do think this is one of the better ones. Subtoxic or Aquanid is a really good set, because Water Bubble means you can never be Scald Burned. You're so bulky, so this Mon is never having a substitute broken. And Leech Life allows you to take heavy advantage of how much HP Vaporeon has. You can heal up a whole bunch with that. It's just... I think generally Arachnid is a little slept on, so <laughs> consider it's just my promotion of Arachnid in usage. And it in a similar vein, um, maybe I, I feel like I'm probably one of the only people that's ever seriously considered Subtoxic Mantine. But I was building with Kinsio one day, and I was like, "Yo, Subtox Mantine kind of, kind of looking pog here." <laughs> but it, you know, similar to the other guys, this is a set that can potentially do some stuff versus Vapo. Now, the worry for Mantine, especially if you're going, like, Scald here, is that Vaporeon maybe can try stalling you out itself. Heavily pressured to use Heal Bell. And obviously, if it's not Heal Bell, well, then you dump a Toxic off, and you're very happy going forward. But that's beside the point. And then, kind of another bond that can do something with EVs. So a Glass Jay set, I believe we're actually doing it as a set spotlight for Facebook and I guess Twitter this month. This, I forget the special defense benchmark. I want to say it's 20. It's either 20 or 36. No, it's 20. It's 20. I'm remembering now because you do this. And then you still have speed for Vaporeon, which is just really good. These special defense EVs though, if I'm remembering correctly, Prevent Vapo from breaking your sub, or at least make it really inconsistent at doing so, with Scald. And that is, you know, again, just showcases mods that can, like, do these little minor techs to give Vaporeon a lot of issues. Now, do I think Vaporeon should be trying to check Glass Tray? No, I don't, but people still will try. You know, water type checks ice type logic, right? And this is where I am going to go into just some, like, more broader ways of dealing with Vaporeon. I'll maybe showcase, like, one Pokemon for each of these points. But the idea here is mostly just to show, like, how do you pressure a mod so bulky and so capable of actually clutching out games late? I've even clutched out a game late with Heal Bell Vaporeon this gen, man. Mod's bulky. So, obviously, when you look at a Pokemon that is a primarily special wall, what comes to mind? Oh, did you say physical wall breakers that get free opportunities to switch in? Because that's, yeah, that's pretty fair. So, like, think about, like, a mod like Surfetched. <laughs> this mod 
is very strong. And it doesn't really care about Vaporeon. I'm pretty sure you Oko with a crit. Probably needs some minor chip. But point stands. Physical breakers that when they get those free switch in chances, Vaporeon, yeah, you can scout the choice locked ones to protect, but you really don't want to risk certain things. Like, you don't want to risk DD Tyrantrum. You don't want to risk Sword Stance Surfetched. Um, you don't want to risk... Uh, let's think of another one here. Uh, having a little issues thinking about other ones, but you get the idea with those two at least, right? And even, like, special wall breakers can still pressure it. We talked about Gudra and Starmie earlier, and I guess I could just mention them, or put them both here. Well, Vaporeon can contend with these Pokemon, it's not a fun time. I'm pretty sure Thunderbolt from Expervelt Gudra does, like, quite a hefty amount to even, like, the specially defensive invested Vaporeons. And obviously, Choice Spec Star made, you know, Thunderbolt or Psychic even. Again, heavily pressuring, and a big thing that you can consider when trying to deal with passive Pokemon is just what in what ways can I force this Mon to do something that is going to give me a free turn? Hit just simply hitting it with a strong move that forces it to waste the turn using maybe protect even or wish is pretty valid. Because, you know, if I use Thunderbolt with Gutra, force Vaporeon to have to waste a turn protecting to get some health back, gives me a free chance to maybe switch into my say think of just a random mon. Uh my sword stance to Sidui, maybe. Which otherwise, you know, maybe doesn't want to have to hard switch into a Vaporeon due to the th threat of a Scald Burn. So you do have some like kind of in-game context you know like context-based things that you can do to make matchups against these like just passive but really annoying to take out Pokemon. But I think that's about it for Vaporeon. And obviously, I don't want to be like coming off like I'm downplaying this Pokemon. Although I have at times, you know, maybe pushed back against the community consensus of Vaporeon is one is the most defining mon in the metagame. Or one of. I, if you want to argue from a utility standpoint, then yeah. Vaporeon is probably the best strictly utility Pokemon in the tier. I mean, it. I actually have the NU VR open right now, conveniently. If we're talking purely utility, right? I mean, Copper Raj is a wall breaker as well. Flygon is a revenge killer wall breaker setup sweeper as well. Rotom C is a scarfer slash setup sweeper as well. So if you're looking at, like, here, mods that are purely utility, I mean, I can see an argument for Vaporeon over Talonflame. I can see an argument for it over Bronzong. So I do think there's a fair point there, but... <laughs> When I see people argue that Vaporeon is legitimately the most defining mod in the metagame, well, eh, 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 you, you know, I think these two define the metagame much more. And in, like, threat level of, like, these two is quite high. But at the end of the day, Vaporeon's an excellent Pokemon. It enables these balance teams that are so common right now to have quite a lot of success, because... Look at this HP stat. Wish from this mon is healing 232 health. That's a lot. It gives these teams so much longevity and staying power. And again, talk about enabling Pokemon. Copper Raja is hugely enabled by Vaporeon. Flygon, hugely enabled by Vaporeon. Because these are mons that constantly have their longevity cut into just through taking heavy hits. Or, well, let's be real here. Getting status by Talonflame Flame Body. <laughs> so having a mod that can sort of like reverse those unfortunates is really helpful. I think it's gonna be it for me. I'm look I'd pass a Vaporeon team somewhere but I'm sure you can find one on the forum somewhere. <laughs> this mod gets used a lot. I'm sure people have shared teams with it so just check out the indie sub forum. There's the indie team bazaar. There's even the sample teams thread which I don't know if any official sample has a Vaporeon on it. It one should. But I'm sure that at least someone has submitted a reasonable team with one. Anyway, so if you're trying to see what all the, you know, hype about this mod is, I recommend it. I hope you guys are enjoying your day. I'm not enjoying mine so far because I got the you-know-what for the you-know-what disease. 
I'm not gonna say those words because I don't want a water, not a watermark, but a little banner under my video <laughs> from YouTube. But um, you know, lo love working off of like five hours of really poor sleep. <laughs> but hope you guys enjoy your day. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you all next time. Peace.